What's going on, Jerome? Still here, undisclosed location. K -k 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 Council Bluffs. Actually, we're still debating what we're gonna call the you know, the travel segments. Um, disclosed locations is up there. Uh, Jeroming is up there. Uh, Producer Ali came up with that one. It's good. But uh, this season is gonna be big for the Minnesota Five Vikings, and we we all know the stars. We all, we all know Jefferson. We all know Daniel Hunter. Hopefully, he'll be back. Uh, but. What, what are some players that are primed for a bust out uh, this season? And it could be guys that have been behind the eight ball due to injury. It could be guys that haven't gotten the time of day. Uh, it could be a couple of free agents. But, all right, so three breakout candidates. Number one, I believe in Josh Oliver, man. Like, I think that he is a sneaky, fantastic signing. I know that a lot of people were taken back by the price tag initially. They're like, oh, well, we have Hawkinson. Johnny Munch is a very fully capable tight end, too. Why would we spend a big coin uh, for the blocking tight end? From the Ravens. Well, number one, he is the best blocking tight end in the game. Like in terms of pass protection, in terms of uh, run blocking, uh, it's very clear that the Vikings want to get back to being the for the using and utilizing all of them, especially in the run game. Because you know, people like to give Irv Smith Jr. a lot of flack, uh, but Irv really worked on his run blocking game. Like he wasn't the best run blocker uh, in the world coming out of Alabama but he really worked on it and he was a big reason why Dalvin Cook had a lot of success as the Vikings were constantly running two tight end sets uh, during the QBI area, uh, era. But I mean, Josh Oliver was a third round pick for a reason and uh, he does have some nice physicality to him uh, coming out of San Jose State, has some good hands. Uh, he just hasn't been utilized fully uh, in the places that he's been. Jacksonville gave up on him very quickly. Ravens obviously behind Mark Andrews as well as uh, sharing time with Isaiah Lake last year. So. I really do think that Josh Andrews uh, could be a bust-out candidate since the Vikings are going to play a lot of 12 personnel and Hawkins is going to get a lot of attention. Same thing with JJ. And you know, using Oliver, you know, big body, sure, sure hands, especially on short yardage in the red zone, I think that could be huge. Uh, next up, Patrick Jones second. So I'm really fired up for PJ too. Uh, he made the most of his opportunities uh, last year. You know, coming into year three, a pride of pit. Uh, I think that among the edge rushers, converting from hand to their third DNs to stand up outside linebackers. I think Patrick Jones second did do a pretty good job last year with Donatel. And I think that Jones does have flexibility either as a stand up or a hand in the dirt guy. And Flores is going to utilize it. And you know, the whole thing of when PJ2 uh, was working his way up as a third round pick. And you know, a lot of people, uh, the coaches were saying that he reminds them of Everson. And yeah, of course that's extremely high praise. But he kind of does, where he's got that power, he's got speed, he's got tenacity, uh, he's a lunch pail guy, he's going to bring it on every single snap, and I really love Patrick Jones, man. If you've seen him uh, on, on his ground, he's putting in the work, and with the Vikings down to Sedarius Smith, Marcus Davenport obviously have potential, but you know, potential and a dollar would get you a cup of coffee. Actually, it's not even true nowadays, you get like five bucks for a cup of coffee. Uh, and TBD, what happens with Daniel Hunter, uh, I do think that Patrick Jones, especially the way that Flores loves using multiple pass rushers, uh, I think he has a chance to really be a stud uh, this season. And then lastly, we all know. We all know. Lewis C, if you know what I mean, where everyone's writing him off. First round pick, it's not Kyle Hamilton. I broke his leg week four. I wasn't even starting the first couple weeks of, of the season last year. Uh, but he is fired up. That leg is good to go. Teammates are even forgetting that he's hurt. He's flying around at OTAs. He's way ahead of schedule. He's going to be a full participant, it looks like, uh, in mandatory mini camp in mid June. He's going to be good to go for training camp. And I think. When you have a, a player who's extremely talented, extremely intelligent, yeah. and extremely motivated uh, to prove all the haters on the loose wrong, I think that's a fantastic combination. Man. So I think that we've seen in this Flores defense that stresses physicality, that stresses speed, that uh, that stresses just really getting after. Uh, I think that we've seen is going to be an absolute uh, hand in glove fit for this defense. And yeah, uh, even though the Vikings do have Harrison Smith, but they do have Cam Beasy, they do have Josh Patella, so they do have a number of very capable safeties. They got the rookie Jay Ward in there as well. The Flores likes rotating safeties, and there's going to be looks at times where and the Vikings are playing six, seven DBs, where the Vikings are having seen or Harrison play as a de facto linebacker. There's going to be lots of spots where they're going to get these guys involved. And uh, having a coordinator who caters his team to his personnel versus the other way around, it's refreshing. But uh, that's it from Council Bluffs.
three breakout candidates for the Vikings. Josh Oliver, Patrick Jones second, and the Messine. Uh, let us know your breakout candidates in the comment section below. You know what to do. Skull, no production value.